is the Mistress Carrie Situation Report for July 16th, 2024. Your daily music headlines, industry info, and everything rock. The Black Crows have mapped out a new 22-date headlining tour, filling in the gaps of their supporting dates on Aerosmith's North American Farewell Tour. The Happiness Bastards Tour, The Reprise, kicks off September 28th in Cincinnati and goes on sale this Friday, July 19th via Ticketmaster. The final date of the tour is February 28th in Uncasville, Connecticut at the Mohegan Sun Arena. Metallica's 1991 self-titled Black Album has now reached the 750-week milestone on the Billboard Top 200. It's the fourth album to hit the milestone, with Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon now at 990 weeks, Bob Marley's Legend at 843 total weeks, and Journey's Greatest Hits coming in at 813 weeks. Mr. Big are closing out their 35-year career in a big way, with not one, but two new album releases. The band's 10th studio album, 10, was released on July 12th. And Mr. Big's last ever live album release, The Big Finish Live, is due out on September 6th. The Big Finish Live is a brand new live album and concert film of Mr. Big's The Big Finish Farewell Tour, where the band played their million-selling Lean Into It album in its entirety. The concert was filmed in 4K at the Budokan in Tokyo, Japan on August 26th of 2023. Nine Inch Nails have teamed up with Doc Martens for a new footwear collection to further celebrate the 30th anniversary of their album, The Downward Spiral. Doc Martens saying it's a physical response to Nine Inch Nails' visceral groundbreaking album with all three joint projects incorporating industrial design references that reflect the artwork for Nine Inch Nails' landmark album. The Nine Inch Nails Doc Martin collection becomes available July 19th on the Doc Martin's website and other select retailers. Simpsons viewers online have discovered that there is a secret hidden movie within dozens of episodes of the hit animated series. During the first few seasons of The Simpsons, members of the family were often seen watching the same movie on their TV, an action-packed blockbuster named McBain. The series would often cut away to the main storyline to show audiences a segment of the film that they were watching. Now, a social media user has pointed out on Twitter that throughout all of the episodes, The Simpsons ended up showing the entirety of the movie, and you can put all of the scenes of McBain together, and it actually makes for an exciting short film. Bush frontman Gavin Rossdale was asked to name his proudest thing about his evolution as a band and as an artist. He responded, quote, well, I think as a songwriter, I just keep getting closer to the bone. I've just written another record that is closer to the bone than the last one. I just keep getting more proud of these records because I think the only thing that happens as you mature is you say, fuck, I better edit myself better because you don't have the abundance of time. So I sort of look at it realistically and go, fuck, five more records, six more records. I don't want to be doing this forever. And I don't want to be one of those sort of people that refuses to stop when it starts to tail off with law of diminishing returns. That would be terrible, but each record gets more lethal because it's such a big job. Sammy Hagar is responding to the criticism that Joe Satriani does not sound exactly like Eddie Van Halen on the Best of All Worlds tour. He said, quote, I think probably the smartest move I made is if I was going to go out and do this to get Joe Satriani. A million guys could have done it. Well, not a million. But you walk into a music store and you see a 12-year-old kid sitting on an amp with one of Eddie's guitars and he's playing Eruption. These genius little kids can do it now, but he doesn't necessarily know what he's doing. You ask him to write a song like that and he's like, ah, I don't know how. You say, Joe, write me a song like that and Joe will write you a song like that because he knows where it's coming from. Sting has been announced as Bourbon and Beyond's replacement headliner after Neil Young pulled out of the festival due to illness. Bourbon and Beyond 2024 is happening September 19th through the 22nd at the Highland Festival Grounds at Kentucky Exposition Center in Louisville, Kentucky. Sales of physical music are on track to see their first increase in two decades, following years of being overshadowed by streaming. 
The renewed interest in physical music collections has reached new heights with the official charts company and BPI reporting that physical album sales have experienced a 3.2% increase in the first six months of 2024, marking the first increase since 2004 when a shift to digital music consumption and streaming began. Taylor Swift's The Tortured Poets Department has been the biggest contributor to the increase in sales, selling more than a quarter of a million copies in the first six months of 2024. And vinyl sales have enjoyed their highest weekly total sales in three decades, thanks to Record Store Day and the release of The Tortured Poets Department in the same week. Missy Elliott is now a star amongst the literal stars. NASA has beamed the rapper's 1997 debut solo single, The Rain, Super Duper Fly, to Venus using their deep space network last Friday, July 12th. The agency's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California sent the transmission 158 million miles from Earth to Venus, Elliot's favorite planet at the speed of light, with the radio frequency signal taking roughly 14 minutes to reach its destination. Elliot's now the second artist to ever have that honor following the Beatles. Saying, quote, yo, this is crazy. We just went out of this world with NASA and sent the first hip hop song into space through the Deep Space Network, she said. My song, The Rain, has officially been transmitted all the way to Venus, the planet that symbolizes strength, beauty and empowerment. The sky is not the limit. It's just the beginning, she said. Richie Kotzen from the Winery Dogs and Smith Kotzen has announced a new solo album, Nomad, arriving September 27th via a fresh record deal with BMG. The guitarist and singer is also offering up the lead single, On the Table. Nomad was written, recorded, and produced by Kotzen and has him playing nearly every instrument on the recording. And that's your sit rep. For more details on all of the stories, check the links in the show notes of this episode. And don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe to the Mistress Carrie podcast. New full-length episodes come out every Wednesday. Episode 214 featuring Blake and Joey from Devour the Day is available now.